For this uh, module, we'll be looking at climate governance and negotiations under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Uh, at the end of this uh, module, uh, you should be able to gain a uh, basic understanding of the, uh, the UN uh, Framework on Climate Change Structure and Processes, as well as be able to understand how the Pacific Island countries participate at the conventions negotiations on what they call the conference of parties and also some basic understandings on on the climate finance for activities under the convention now when you look at the united nations framework conventions on climate change uh, some basic information on that uh, it was actually negotiated and signed in 1992 during the rio convention so the convention sets the overall framework for efforts to by governments to tackle the challenges posed by climate change and it entered into force on 21st of march 1994. so far countries have ratified the treaty which is referred to parties to the convention currently we have around 900 195 countries who have ratified the convention and the ultimate objective of the convention is to stabilize greenhouse gases concentration uh, at a level that will prevent dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system, which is part of the Article 2 of the convention. The convention has its secretariat based in Bonn in Germany and it's been established since the agreement was signed in 1992. And the Secretariat has been charged with supporting the operation of the Convention. The supreme uh, body of the Convention is called the Conference of Parties. And it meets annually since 1995. The first meeting was held in Berlin, in Germany, on 20, 28 March to 7 April 1995. So it has been meeting since 1994. Five, and this year in 2018 it will meet again in Katowice in Poland from 3rd to 14th of December and that will be the COP24 so since 1995 COP1 in 1995 it has been meeting ever since until this year which will now be the 24th time for the conference of parties to meet which is now called the COP24. The Conference of Party meetings are the two uh, permanent subsidiary bodies. One is of course called the Subsidiary Body for Scientific and Technology Advice, SUBSA for short, and the other second subsidiary body is the Subsidiary Body for Implementation or SPI. The SUBSA provide the COP with advice on scientific technological and methodological matters. Two key areas of its work are to promote the development and transfer of environmentally friendly technologies and to conduct technical work to improve guidelines for preparing national communications and emission inventories. Now for the SBI, SBI provide advice to the COP or the Conference of Parties on all matters concerning the implementation of the convention. It examines the information in the national communications and emission inventories submitted by parties in order to assess the overall effectiveness of the convention. The SBI also advises the COP on budgetary and administrative matters. And all parties are required under the convention to produce national communications. For developing country parties, that is uh, optional, they can provide it from time to time as required under the convention. And under the national convention uh, communications, parties communicate their activities on the ground within their countries on what they are doing in terms of mitigation as well as adaptation to climate change. And the Global Environment Facility at the World Bank was set up to provide the budgetary support for countries to
to implement activities in terms of mitigation and adaptation in countries and they communicate that to the convention secretariat. And uh, the next uh, uh, part of this module will involve how the Pacific Island countries participate at these uh, negotiations under the conference of parties. The Pacific Island states participate in the negotiations through international, regional and national efforts. All countries who are part of the UNFCCC are organized into five regional groups. This is mainly for the purposes of electing the Bureau. These five regional groups are the African states, the Asian states, Eastern European states, Latin America and the Caribbean states, and the Western European and other states. The five regional groups, however, do not usually present the practical interests of the parties involved. So there are other groupings that are more important for the Pacific Island states. These are the Alliance of Small Island States, commonly known as AOCs, the Small Island Developing States, or SIDS, and the Least Developed Countries, LDCs, and the Group of 77 and China. The Alliance of Small Island States, or AOCs, is a collision of small island and low-lying coastal countries that share similar development challenges and concerns about the environment, especially their vulnerability to global climate change. It functions primarily as an ad hoc lobby and negotiating voice for small island developing states within the United Nations system. EOSIS has a membership of 44 states and observers from all oceans and regions of the world, including Africa, the Caribbean, the Indian Ocean, the Mediterranean and Pacific and South China Sea. The Small Island Developing States is a collision of 40 low-lying islands which are members of the G77 and China group and we will come to this group later on. They are particularly vulnerable to sea level rise. States parties are united by the threat that climate change poses to their survival and frequently adopt a common stance at the negotiations. They were the first to propose a draft text during the Kyoto Protocol negotiations calling for a cut in carbon emissions. The least developed countries represent the poorest part of the international community. They comprise more than 800 million people, which is about 12% of the world's population. But they account for less than 2% of the world's GDP and about 1% of global trade in goods. The 48 parties who are defined as LDCs by the UN are regularly work together in the wider UN system. They have become increasingly active in the climate change process and often work together to defend their interests with regard to the vulnerability and adaptation to climate change. Developing country parties generally work through the Group of 77 and China to establish common negotiating positions. The G77 was founded in 1964 in the context of the UN Conference on Trade and Development and now functions throughout the UN system. The party holding the chair of the G77 in New York rotates every year and often speaks for the G77 in China as a whole. However, because the G77 in China is a diverse group with differing interests on climate change issues, individual develop development, parties also intervene in debates, as do groups within the G77, such as the African group, the small island developing states, and the LDCs. Nationally determined contributions, more commonly known as the NDCs, are a pathway to the achievement of the long-term goals of the Paris Agreement. NDCs contain different efforts by parties to reduce emissions, at the national level and adapt to the impacts of climate change. In Article 4 of the Paris Agreement, parties are required to prepare, communicate and maintain successive NDCs. 
Parties are also required to implement mitigation measures at the national level to achieve their NDCs. Together, these climate actions determine whether the world achieves the long-term goals of the Paris Agreement and to reach global peaking of greenhouse gas emissions as soon as possible and undertake rapid reductions thereafter. This will contribute to achieving a balance between anthropogenic emissions by sources and removals by sinks of GHGs in the second half of the century. It is understood that the peaking of emissions will take longer for developing country parties and that emissions reductions are undertaken on the basis of equity in the context of sustainable development and efforts to eradicate poverty, which are critical development priorities for many developing countries. Each climate plan reflects the country's ambition to reduce emissions, taking into account its national capabilities and circumstances. Currently, guidance on the NDCs are being negotiated under the Ad Hoc Working Group on the Paris Agreement Agenda Item 3. Financial support or climate finance as it's commonly referred to is very important as it enables countries to not only implement the convention but more importantly in their national efforts to pursue low emission and climate resilient development pathways. This is especially true for developing countries including the small islands developing states of the Pacific region. The convention upon its adoption in 1992 established a financial mechanism. Article 11 of the convention reads, a mechanism for the provision of financial resources on a grant or concessional basis, including for the transfer of technology, is hereby defined. It shall function under the guidance of and be accountable to the conference of the parties, which shall decide on its policies, program priorities, and eligibility criteria related to this convention. Its operation shall be entrusted to one or more existing international entities. In line with Article 11, the Global Environment Facility, or GEF, GEF, in short, was partly entrusted with the operationalization of the financial mechanism. In recognition of the special vulnerability facing developing countries, and in particular the least developed countries, in 2001, parties established two other funds called the Special Climate Change Fund and the Least Developed Countries Fund. The Special Climate Change Fund supports adaptation and technology transfer in all developing country parties to the UNFCCC, supporting both long-term and short-term adaptation activities in water resource management, land management, agriculture, health, infrastructure development, fragile ecosystems, including mountainous ecosystems and integrated coastal zone management. The Least Developed Country Fund addresses the special needs of least developed countries that are especially vulnerable to the adverse impacts of climate change. The Least Developed Country Fund reduces the vulnerability of sectors and resources that are central to the development and livelihoods such as water, agriculture and food security, health, disaster risk management and prevention, infrastructure and fragile ecosystems. We also have what is known as the Adaptation Fund. The Adaptation Fund was established in 2001 under the Kyoto Protocol. And we have provided supplementary readings for the Kyoto Protocol under this module. The Adaptation Fund was set up 
to finance concrete adaptation projects and programs in developing country parties to the Kyoto Protocol. Another fund that has a sig very significant role is the Green Climate Fund. The Green Climate Fund has its significance in the sense that even though it was set up before the adoption of the Paris Agreement, the fund was mandated to serve the Paris Agreement up upon the adoption of the Paris Agreement. The fund supports both adaptation and mitigation activities in developing countries. 